mean, you're obviously quite proud of what you managed to achieve with the album because you, you guys played in Iraq. Yeah. And then the I actually was getting offers to play in Iraq before, and I got there, and they were like, dude, you don't play fucking Hey Man, nice shot. I can't wait until you fucking play that song, man. You know, they're, 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 you know, they're like there to, I mean, there, there was one kid who's just like, oh, I know. It's like that guy in, uh, in, uh, what's that movie, Stripes? All I know is I finally get to fucking kill somebody. You know, like, you know, like, there, there's a little bit of that there too, yeah. but yeah, the, the, you know, it, going to Iraq is incredibly, it's, it's, you know, Frank Kavanaugh played bass and filter during like the take, you know, the, the titled record and stuff. He actually joined us on stage one night in his whole uniform and everything and played his bass and uh, um, it was a pretty remarkable thing. But yeah, I mean, you know, you're in Iraq and you get out of the, you get out of the C30, the AC30 or whatever it is and that's actually a Vox amplifier. <laughs> I think the sleep dep deprivation is starting to hit me. Um, but you get off the uh, the plane, and you you, you know, and the, and the commander goes, "Hey, so you smell all that shit? Yeah, it's two things. Number one, this is the biggest producer of oil per capita in the world, Kirkuk. He's like, and that's why we're here. That that's why we're here." We're here for the oil. Number two, the Iraqis think it's pretty funny that they went ahead and put their garbage in a pit. They got their garbage pit next to us. They think it's funny that they put it right next to the Americans. And what they do is they take their five cent gasoline and they pour it on the garbage and they burn it every night. So you're smelling two things, the oil refinery and the garbage pit that they burn every night. And I was like, hey, welcome to Kirkuk. You know, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, 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 holy shit. And there's just fire in the sky. And it's just, and I'm playing Hey Man, Nice Shot. And there's 5,000 troops just sitting there. That's why I say Hey Man, Nice Shot. You know, and it was just like, we get done playing. And there's a radar system tied up to a computer. And... The radar system detects anything coming in this big. Anything bigger than that, made of metal, will be detected on this radar system. And it spurts out this alarm that, you know, says, you know, there's something that's hit that's headed for you and it will land within the next twenty seconds. So we're all sitting there signing autographs and there's five thousand troops. And sure enough, <laughs> Like all these alarms go off and they go, and it goes alarm, alarm red. And alarm red means you're gonna die. So hit the deck. So all the people, all the soldiers hit the deck and the band and the crew were still on stage. And we're like, what? And they're like, get the fuck down, retard, fuck tard. Get to, no, they didn't say that. But they, they're, like, they're like, get the fuck, the filter on the deck, on the deck. We're just like, ah, what the fuck is a deck? What the fuck is a deck? And we're just all like, get out! And you know, and meanwhile, you're like, Shoo. you know, and you're like listening to this shit, and you're like, and, and you start laughing. Like, the first thing that happens, you start like, you go like, holy fuck. And then all of a sudden, you realize now someone's gonna get hurt. Like, one of these amazing people that's been so incredible, one of these guys is gonna die or lose a limb or, you know, you know, have a head injury that's going to be so bad that they're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. And, you know, and then it becomes very real. And, um, you know, the, the uh, group broke off into two directions, like, <laughs> alarm black. Black means the attack is over, but you're still, you've got to go run to a bomb shelter. So one half of the, the crew went this way and the band went to the right. I don't know, we just went right. And... The guy's running, he's like, come on, filter, come on, filter, and all the lights go dim, and there's flashlights, and everybody's flashlights are, like, all over the place, and we're like, how long have you been here? He's like, I just flew in this morning, and I'm like, you mean we've been here longer than you, and we're following you? And he's like, yeah, but, but there's some over here, don't worry. We get down in this, like, pit, in this, like, ravine, 
And he's like, well, I don't know where the bomb shelter is, but this will work. And we take the flashlight and we start pointing it up and we realize we're in a fuel depot. Oh, so no. it's nothing but huge tanker trucks of diesel, which is the only way these bases have power. You know, there's no power plants out there. It's just fuel. It's just, it's generators that are hooked up to fucking diesel engines and they burn diesel all night long. And you, it's just the craziest shit I've ever done going to Iraq and, and playing for the troops. And, and it's, it's rewarding, it's taxing. Uh, you know, you don't get any sleep, you walk right off the plane and you're saying acoustic, which is what happened to me on our Operation MySpace, and I was so out of it, I'm like, trying to say, take a picture with a fucking crazy guitar that's been like, you know, sitting in the desert sun way too long, and like, but uh, I met some amazing people, and you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy when, you know, when a, when a 21 year old, I, I was literally, this guy had just gotten off an MRAP, literally came off a mission and the MRAP and you can see it all over his clothes, combat and, and or, or or a mission. Dust covered in dust and sweat and getting off this thing and he just came over and he came into where we were sitting and he looks at me and he's just like Filter. The singer filter. What do you what the fuck? I'm like, we're playing tonight. And he's like what are you doing in Iraq? What the fuck? It's so confusing to him. And he just comes up to me and he just goes, Man, you know, in a convoy with six trucks, you can't stop. You can't stop. So when a four-year-old walks out in front of the convoy, you can't stop. And it's just like, are you serious? He's like, you can't stop. And he just said that and he started crying. And I'm like, you mean you have to run over the four-year-old? He goes, you can't stop. You can't stop for the convoy. It has to go. You can't stop. And it was just like, you ran over a four-year-old child? And it's just like, that's the war. That's the fucking war. You know, and it just, you know, it's incredible. So, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, wow, it's intense. It's really hardcore, and you know, this 21-year-old kid will never be the same, you know, because he didn't sign up for that. He signed up to fight for weapons of mass destruction or, you yeah. know, a lot or, lies. <laughs> and, and, you know, you realize, you know, eight years in, and what the fuck was that about, you know, so. Heavy shit! <laughs> How's the interview, kids? <laughs> Okay, now maybe something a little less intense. All right, that's the plan for the troops. I'm giving you everything. I'm giving like I'm the best interview man. I you give me on one cup of coffee. Like, nah, 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 nah. You know? I knew this was going to be a good interview. <laughs> um,